know we cursed in the city. All these mass shootings that we hear about and witness in Chicago, who's the primary victims when they say 87 people got killed this past weekend? We are, right? We the ones always getting shot in the streets. Who do you see mainly walking down the streets high off heroin? Drunk in broad daylight. Us. That's how you know this Bible is talking about us. Y'all from Chicago? You from Chicago? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm assuming you from Chicago too, right? Yes, sir. Uh, what bad things goes on in Chicago, Fonte? Killing? What you got, Aaliyah? What else besides killing? You don't know? Car kill boys? You heard of them before? You ain't never heard it. I know you, I know you heard of the Kia boys. They stealing cars and everything. What else, James? What else going on in Chicago? Man, we lying. I mean, we, we lying. On top of murder. We stealing. I mean, we breaking all 10. So we breaking all 10 and much more. That's right. Because it, it's, it's 10, but it's much more uh, that's within that 10 that our people are not keeping. And that's the reason why we're at the bottom of society. That's the reason why we are a cursed people. And we're going to show y'all that in the Bible. But we also going to show, because like the officer stated before, that God chose us above everybody. Vontae, do it seem like we chose above everybody else in the world? That we are special people? Be honest, do it seem like that? When you look at our neighborhood, when you look at all the trash and filth in our neighborhood, you look at all the drug addicts and drunkards walking up and down the street, do it seem like we're chosen as a people? All right, let's see. Let's see why we are in this condition as a chosen people. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So I got, hold on, I got more questions for y'all. I'm going to have a brother read it again, and I got some questions for you, Vontae. I got some questions for you too, Brother James. So step in. We family, bro. Step in. Read it again. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. So it said, it shall come to pass. What does that mean, Vontae? The words, it shall come to pass. You know what that means? Or, no, those exact words. Yeah, it is talking about us, but what does it shall come to pass mean? Do you know? You want to take a crack at it, Brother James? It's going to happen. Meaning that it's going to happen. It's going to for sure happen. God is telling us a prophecy. Meaning that something is going to happen for sure in the future. Let's see what. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we will not what? Hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. It said if we will not hearken. If we will not listen to the words of God. To this Bible. Y'all following me? Read. To observe. To do all his commandments. Nah, just here. <laughs> to do all his commandments. Nah, just one. To do all his commandments. To do all his commandments. This Bible is full of commandments. Read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, if we don't do what God say and follow his commandments, curses will come upon us. That was, that's simple understanding right there. That was pretty clear, right? You ain't got to be a scholar to understand that. God is saying, listen, if you do not do what I say, curses will come upon you. Now, is a curse a good or a bad thing? It's a bad thing, right? A curse, yes, it is a bad thing. Yeah. 
People try to say, oh, it's a good thing and a curse. Nah, a curse is a bad thing. Let's see what curses we went through as a people for not listening. Read. My chat. Verse 16. Curse. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall thou be in the city. Think about Chicago once again. Who live in the ghettos in Chicago? Vontae. Who live in the ghettos? You said everybody? So, all right, we own 103rd and Wentworth. Besides, look at the people you see on this side. Young brother, what's your name? You said what? Malik. All right, Malik. In this neighborhood, let's just say on the corner of 103rd and Wentworth. Do you see a bunch of white people rolling through this neighborhood? Because we in the hood right now, right? We in the hundreds. You said you don't see white people rolling through this hood, do you? You see mainly blacks and Latinos, right? If you went to the hood on the west side, let's say if you go to Humboldt Park, are you going to see a bunch of white people rolling through there? No. Are you going to see a bunch of Arabs rolling through there? Are you going to see the Chinese man rolling through there? No. What about if you go to Inglewood? Who you going to see in Inglewood? Our people, blacks and Hispanics. You ain't going to see nobody else. That's how you know we cursed in the city. All these mass shootings that we hear about and witness in Chicago, who's the primary victims when they say 87 people got killed this past weekend? We are, right? We the ones always getting shot in the streets. Who do you see mainly walking down the streets high off heroin? Drunk in broad daylight. Us. That's how you know this Bible is talking about us. Because it said, curse shall thou be in the city. Read the second part. And curse shall thou be in the field. Malik, I got a question for you. Come here real quick. Look at this photo real right now. So, it said, curse shall thou be in the field. When were we as a people in the field? You know, you know a little bit about black history? When were we in the field? Just think about it. You gotta think back some years. In, in cotton, cotton. Slavery, right? <laughs> we was picking in the cotton field, right? That we were in the field and we were cursed in the field. Cause somebody can come and say, well, we were all in the field. The white man was in the field too. Yeah, he was in the field too, but he wasn't making cotton. He was the one swinging that whip. And that's how we got these lashes on our back. What we cover right now is black history in the Bible. And why we in the conditions that we're in now. We in this predicament now, we in the ghetto because we did not listen to God. You got parents, Malik? How old are you? You said how old? You said 22? All right, so when you was a kid, right? Let's say your mama and daddy gave you some ground rules or gave you rules to follow. If you didn't follow them, weren't there gonna be consequences? Right? There, you, what was the consequences? I laid. Yeah. That's a good choice. Because this is gonna be the greatest information you will ever hear in your life, bro. Nah, you, you good. You good. But um, you said, what was the punishment your parents gave you? Couldn't go outside, couldn't watch TV, a whooping, right? Hey, this was our punishment for not listening to the Most High God. Remember, because after slavery, a short time later, we became doctors, scholars, scientists. We invented damn near everything you can see around you now. So you know, hold on, hold on, hold on, brother James, brother James. So you know, so you know that this was an act of God by not listening to him. This is what happened to us because we didn't keep his commandments, right? We in the ghetto because we didn't keep his commandments. Now, how do you think we're able to get out of the ghetto? Because that is possible. You don't have to, you don't have to, um, our community doesn't have to be like this, even in this present world. If not keeping the commandments is what got us here, how do we change our environment? By doing what? 
No, if it's okay, so if we're not following God's rules and we got in this situation, how do we get out of this situation? Teach. By following God's rules, right? That's all we got to do, plain and simple, keeping the commandments. Keeping the commandments. That's, hey, that's our whole purpose as a people. Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Because before you leave, Brother James, I got something for you. Because right. you know you an Israelite, right? Yes, sir. You ever, I'm sorry, brother, what's your name? My name is Pope. Pope, you ever heard of the Israelites? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know you're an Israelite? You said, you, familiar. you familiar? Yeah. What's required of you? Uh, belief in Yahweh. Bring it out. Belief in Yahweh. Okay, okay. Let's see. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Bring and it's it the same question for you as well, Malik. We're going to give you the answer on what's required of us as a people. Because we like to reach out to God for help, but we don't like to upkeep our end on what's required of us. Read. And now Israel, what doth the Lord God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Read. To keep the commandments of the, of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Read verse 13 again. We're going over what's required of us. Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes. For I command thee this day for thy good. It's required of us to keep God's commandments. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support.